<laughs> Hi guys, Bernie here from sunny San Diego. This is the next video about the Ansel Nano and you guys asked for it. You wanted to have Mark in the video. So um, actually I made it possible. He's going to be in the call today. Let's get started. And um, I think that's worth a like. So <laughs> smash that like button for this video. Mark, uh, good morning. Or uh, should I say um, good night to Germany. So the ship date for the Nano is getting closer. We have Mark. Mark is uh, 19 years old. You all should know that. He's a German developer. And uh, Mark, maybe you just introduce yourself. Yeah, so I guess I don't have to mention my name anymore here. Um, I've been with Ansel actually for one and a half year now. And in that time, I've been working on different projects uh, in the team. We've, I've been working on the website. I've been part of the Ant-Man development team uh, for the past half year. Um, and yeah, lately, of course, working on the Ansel Nano, um, which is why we're here today. Yeah, okay. That's cool, Mark. So, um, yeah, Edge Linux on the Nano all looks so easy and simple when we use it. But in fact, uh, getting there was a major project. Um, tell us a bit about the challenges that you faced. Yeah, so in the beginning, it seemed like an easy enough task. Uh, we already had our Ansible scripts that Marta created, which in theory at least would allow us to turn any CentOS installation into Edge Linux. So the first step that I like naturally thought of was getting CentOS running on the Raspberry Pi 4. <laughs> Unfortunately, that kind of turned out to be more of a hassle uh, than any of us initially suspected, because there is no production-ready um, CentOS uh, image that you can just flush on the SD card and boot your Raspberry Pi 4 off. Um, there were a few images um, for the Raspberry Pi 3, but all of those were only 32-bit and we needed 64-bit in order to run our Ant-Man and all the other technologies that we built. Um, so, I mean, there were a few people on the forum, especially um, Pablo Greco, thanks by the way. So these guys actually experimented a lot with 64-bit um, CentOS running on the Raspberry Pi 4, but that was very experimental and definitely not production ready. I mean, even though that helped us a lot, in the end, I ended up compiling my own kernel, um, which, you know, even though it turned out to be a lot of work, I uh, had many advantages like compiling our own um, features that we needed directly into the kernel, like KVM support. Um, yeah, we needed we needed that hardware virtualization, right? And that's a new feature of the of the Pi Four because it has the the ARM V8, which supports hardware virtualization, but getting that kernel support. Um, actually, in, in Linux, was not so easy, right? Yes, that's right. I mean, even if you think about it, even the default Raspbian image that is meant to run on the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 only has 32-bit support. There is a 64-bit version, but you need to manually boot it, and even then, it's only the kernel. So the user land is still 32-bit. Uh, um, I mean, after all the changes, uh, after all the challenges that I faced, getting CentOS finally running on the Ansel Nano didn't really make it an Ansel Nano yet. So all I had at this point was basically a Raspberry Pi 4 running a CentOS version. Um, so the next idea was to simply, you know, pull out the Ansible scripts, say, okay, hey, run the playbook on the Ansel Nano, and then end up with the actual Edge Linux installation. Yeah, <laughs> turns out again, not as easy. Um, so there were a lot of packages missing, including ZFS, um, just for the architecture, which is why I basically ended up compiling ZFS from source. At least I tried to. Turns out that even the compiler that I had available for the architecture uh, was over four years old, and therefore I had to compile the, my own compiler simply to get to the next step. Um, so. At the time, it just seemed like, okay, you solved one problem and two more um, unfold themselves. Um, you know, and as I was trying to compile ZFS, I ran into another issue. So I wouldn't even go get past the configure script because it was compiling that, I, that the kernel headers that I installed manually weren't detected, even though everything was in the right um, directories. 
So I then ended up going back to my cross compiler and creating RPM packages so that I could install them via YAM and that they would be recognized by the system. And that then finally did the trick for my configuration um, or for configuring the, Z, uh, the ZFS modules, which then allowed me to compile them and then I had ZFS up and running. But again, that was only one next step in that long road to getting from a Raspberry Pi 4 to an actual Edge Linux um, running Ansel Nano. So there were a lot um, more challenges involved. I mean, just want to keep it brief here, but yeah, it took me quite some time to get to where we are right now. But in the end, everything turned out great. I have actually five Anthos running on the Ansel Nano right now. Um, and it's pretty amazing if you think about it to have all that amazing functionality and all that, all the features that, you know, uh, we all know and expect having them running on that tiny device is like, yeah, it's really worth the effort in the end. Wow. Wow. Mark that, that sounds really like a major breakthrough and it just hasn't been done before on the Pi 4. And, and we have KVMs and LXEs, so as you're used to, uh, with Ansel, you can run full hardware virtualization side by side with bare metal containerization to get the most out of your hardware. And where would it be more crucial to get the most out of your hardware than on a Raspberry Pi, right? So, yeah, that's really cool. Yes, yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> Templating has been very exciting, actually. So, I mean, we have our usual suspects, uh, especially in the LXC branch, those super lightweight containers. We have Ubuntu Server, we have Debian, we even have Raspbian um, up and running, multiple containers at the same time on the Ansel Nano. That's not a problem at all. Uh, working great with installations like websites, uh, GitLab, or anything else. Um, and then on the KVM side, we have FreeBSD, also an Ubuntu Server version. Um, and I'm also experimenting with a few other more yeah, unusual KVM templates. Uh, for example, right now it's Windows IoT that I'm trying um, to create a template for, and it also Windows ARM. Yeah, that sounds awesome. All right, so and um, how did it all work out uh, working in the, in the Ansel team? Did you get the support from, from our other team members that you needed? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, just if you think about the size of the project, it's really crucial to have the whole team working together here. Um, so initially, Mardo was a lot of help in just getting CentOS up and running and trying to migrate CentOS to Edge Linux because he was the one who authored the Ansible scripts, who had the most experience with um, running CentOS on our hardware and migrating everything over um, to Edge Linux. I mean, as we talked about, there were a few other hurdles um, that we needed to face. Um, that's where Joe actually came in very handy, another developer on our team. Um, he's been working a lot with getting Ant-Man running, um, checking the dependencies that we required. And also when we came to the point where we couldn't find the right dependency um, because it simply didn't exist for the architecture, um, he was a lot of help in changing the Ant-Man code in a way that would allow us to have it running on that kind of changed environment. Um, then I've been working closely from the beginning with a marketing team and just figuring out, okay, what do we actually want to do? How do we want to present it? What it's, what are the features supposed to be? And when talking about features, obviously also Mario, who has been working in our support for the past few years, um, and the other support team, we've been just figuring out what the priorities are here, what we want to do, what we need to do um, to basically end up with the best product possible. Yeah, yeah. And I guess also from support, all the input that came from Mario and his team, yeah, that's what makes our, our product mature, right? Getting all those feedback from our customer and, and, and incorporating it. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Uh, I mean, all the customer feedback, that's, that has been phenomenal. And that has really been a key motivation. Um, people showing us, people telling us that 
we're doing something right here. So I hope you enjoyed me uh, bringing in Mark. I'm, you know, really, really thankful um, he got through all those challenges in such a short time so that we now can actually focus on the logistical aspects of uh, of pushing out those nano orders that we've already made. We're also going to obviously work on on the regular offer for the Ansel Nano. So right now, just a few of you have been able to get a hold of it um, through the uh, the Black Friday offer. Um, but we're working on something that stays there as an offer permanently. So stay tuned. You're going to hear that that offer. Uh, hear about that offer real soon um, later this January. So please also subscribe to our channel. That helps us grow and you won't miss any any of those videos. Also hit that bell notification so that you're going to be notified by YouTube every time we upload a new video. That's it. Oh wait, <laughs> one more thing. Yeah, Mark would like to give you a quick preview of what's coming. All right, Mark. There is one more thing, basically just a sneak uh, sneak peek. Um, as some of you maybe have noticed, we've been working heavily on the for the past few months on improving the Ant-Man API. And that's when we kind of came up with another idea or an idea for another project, um, having Ant-Man running in your pocket. And, you know, as I'm a huge um, fan of Swift, I basically um, started experimenting with an iOS app. And yeah, today I'm here to give you a very quick preview. Um, if you look at the simulator here, we have, uh, we're actually connected to the Ansel Nano. We have five anthets running on there right now. Um, you have the option to sort them, to filter them, create a new one, even connect multiple nodes. Um, look at the details. It is super cool. and. Hey, 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 Mark, 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 stop it for now. Restrain your, your enthusiasm, because we're going to make that special video about the iOS app, right? Let's do it in the next video. Guys, stay tuned. Don't miss the next video. In order for that to happen, subscribe to our channel, smash the bell notification, also smash the like button, give us a comment, and see you next time. Bye.